Hi, the game. Clint Rawls here, Delta Valves and Controls. Uh, I want to make a, a decent video about setting valve travel. There's a couple of different ways you can do it, uh, but there seems to be, I don't know, a little bit of confusion because the actuator, like for instance, this valve is two inch, full port, travels inch and an eighth, but yet in reality, the actuator will travel about inch and three eighths so there's some slack in there and if you have no air on it and you just connect the stem you know the stem connector stem blocks there's no seat load uh, the valve has to have a good amount of seat load you have to take that slack out of the travel so i'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do it um, typically on most actuators it's going to be about a quarter inch of travel slack so this is inch and eight travel it's going to actually stroke about inch and three eighths so basically what i'm going to do here i'm going to show you the way we would do it in the shop so there's complications when you're in the field doing it the proper way and there's ways to get around that so i'll show you that after i show you the shop way to perform it so what I like to do is definitely, you know, tighten down your yoke nut, make sure that's good. You've got two stem jam nuts down here at the bottom underneath this travel indicator. So what I like to do is just start. You've got your airline hooked up, you've got regulated air supply. I'll stroke the actuator up. Because as bad as you think you shoved that valve and you felt it tonk go into the seat, a lot of times when you tighten that packing or you do anything, it'll lift it up, you know, just a tiny bit or sometimes a lot. So what I like to do is stroke the actuator stem up a little bit, spin your jam nuts up until it hits. And then I'll lift the air off the actuator. Now I know it has physically forced that plug into the seat. You can tell by the indicator, it's not flopping anymore. That sucker as tight as can be. Now stroke the actuator stem back up. Run your jam nuts back down. I always run them down as far as it'll let me. Now, moving on, we know the valve seated. We're gonna loosen our travel steel screws we're going to line our travel scale up, dead nut closed with the travel indicator. I'm only going to tighten one screw because we're going to have to adjust this later on. Next, I'm going to take one half of the stem connector block and I'm going to put it on the actuator stem and valve stem. And I'm just going to hold it there. And what I'm going to do, I have to this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke it up with the half the block, and it's going to pull the valve into the open position. I'm going to pull it up until my indicator gets to the wide open position. So I'm going to do that now. Sorry, I didn't have all my air off. There we go. That's about wide open. Might be hard to see on there. So now I'm going to take my block off. And you can see, after I removed the block and gave it a little more air, it traveled up about a quarter of an inch. So now that I'm hitting the seat at inch and an eight, hitting the actuator stop, now is the time to make your stem connection. So, around to this side, put my blocks on, Thank you. 
Uh, now next, you're going to notice that the travel indicator is not tied against it anymore, against the stem blocks. So now you're going to spin your jam nuts. You're going to run them up. You're going to run the first one up against the travel indicator, and it's going to run into the connecting block. You're going to take your three-quarter inch wrench. You want to jam it. Doesn't have to be super tight. You just want to jam it against the connecting block. Now you're going to take your half nut, which is one of the jam nuts. You're going to jam it against that one. That prevents the process from being able to unscrew because sometimes it'll swirl. You know, they say it, think of it like a toilet when you flush it. As the process goes through that valve, it swirls certain applications it can physically spin that plug and unscrew it from the connecting block and typically it'll lock the valve closed and they'll lose all control of the process that's what the jam nuts are for always want to make sure to tighten those up next now that we've run that indicator and those jam nuts up the travel scale is no longer going to line up so now it's time to loosen the one screw we're going to line it back up in open position since we left it wide open. We're going to tighten both screws. And now we're going to verify by letting the air off. Now whenever it goes completely closed, it should be lined up exactly dead nut on the closed position. If you did something wrong, I've done it. I've messed it up before in the past and thought I was in the seat not doing things the right way because you get so much repetition. If it travels past the closed position, something went wrong. You need to redo it. You need to verify you're in the seat and then relift it the inch and an eighth, let the block off, put the air all the way until the actuator hits the stop, remake your connection, realign everything. Let the air off and do it right. It should be exactly inch and an eighth travel. There's almost exactly a quarter inch over travel in this actuator that you have to take out. And if you don't take it out, the valve is not going to seat properly. So now I'm going to go into it and I'm going to show you how I'd do it if I was in the field without, say, regulated air. So if you just had straight 30 pounds and the only thing you could do is bypass it to go all the way open you know it's kind of easy to find a way to do that it's hard to sit here and throttle a regulator like I have here in the shop set you know a lot of times you can tell you know the instrument will have a bypass you can go in a bypass and it'll go wide open full output you know 35 40 pounds but to do anything in between can be very difficult. Sometimes you can't do it. So, the other way to do this, I'm gonna reverse my process. I'm just gonna break everything loose again. Start from scratch. Now you notice I've stroked it up some. I do not want to take these blocks off with tension into the seat. It'll pop and it'll have a lot of thrust on it. I know all of us have done it. I've done it a thousand times. Never been hurt by it, but it can happen. I know of guys who've got popped in the face with connecting blocks and had their fingers smashed, all kinds of things. So, the way I'm going to show you now is just strictly the field way. There's actually two methods. So, if you're in a hurry, um, so like right now, I don't have a good way of getting this thing into the seat. So I can back off my packing just a little bit, and I'm going to just try and force it. So I just forced it, it hit the seat, I can hear it, you can physically hear it thud. Now, so just say, for instance, all I have is an instrument with a bypass. I don't have time and I don't have a way to regulate it going up and down that's easy. All I'm going to do is put it in bypass. I'm going to stroke this actuator 
all the way up until it hits the top stop, right there. So now, I'm going to back my jam nuts up just a little bit. I'm going to line my travel indicator up in the closed position. And next, I'm going to take and I'm going to go next size down wrench. So the jam nuts are three quarter. I'm going to go down to an 11 16th. I'm going to stick it in here like so. So I'm going over the packing nut and under the jam nut. And I'm going to lift it. And the goal is to lift it until the indicator lines up in the open position. Right there. So now you see what we've done. We hit the C, stroke the actuator all the way to the top stop. Now we've lifted, manually lifted the plug from the C an inch and an eighth exactly based off the travel scale. And that's it. So now we're going to set our connecting blocks. All right. And I guarantee you this works phenomenally well. We've done it hundreds of times in the field. Now, if you're, I'm going to shove it into the seat. If you're in a nine line bind, you got to hurry. You know, there's, there's times I've been in the field and you wouldn't believe some of the scenarios you can get into. Where you've got four compressors running, they're getting out of ramp because you're down and working on one. Compressors are starting to surge. You don't want them to trip on a high or low, so you got to get this thing going quick. So the best thing to do is you can back your regulator down to, you know, if your bench set is, one of your tag is 8 to 30, whatever, back your regulator down to 10. All you want to do is find a way to lift this just a little bit, you know, about a quarter of an inch right there. You could stroke it up just a quarter of an inch and hold make your connection a lot of times that's good enough for field work so I'm gonna do that I lifted it about a quarter of an inch just off eyeball and you'll see that it's gonna get you plenty close so tighten this up Tighten our jam nuts up. Alright, I'm going to readjust the travel scale. Actually, I'm going to let the air off now. Adjust the travel scale. Right there, tighten up both screws. Perfect. And I'm going to stroke it up. That thing is almost spot on perfect. Inch and an eight travel. So, a lot of times you get out in the field and it might be a Fisher valve or a, a CVS or Dynaflo. The travels are, it's not terribly important. I mean, it needs to be close. But I'll tell you the one that I see the most that is the furthest off is Fisher. Those guys don't give a damn about travel. As long as they get close in the semi-proximity, they're going to make the connection and run with it. And from an engineer's standpoint, where I design trim, special trims, things like that, where this thing's supposed to travel an inch and an eighth for a certain capacity, everything I've done is designed it to work at exactly inch and an eighth travel. I do not like it when guys short travel, so I believe it should be at least the travel, an inch and an eighth, or maybe a tiny bit more, but never less. Um, next, I'm gonna go into, let's just assume that you wanna set the bench. So, there's a lot of procedures on setting the bench. Uh, with just the actuator. A lot of people talk about physically, that's why they call it a bench set. You set it on a bench, actuator by itself. 
from an engineer's perspective, it's completely wrong. Uh, I can get all kinds of negative comments, and I'll explain you why. This is a 667 size 40 actuator. It's got 69 inches, square inches of area underneath here. If this takes, I'm just gonna throw out an example, a 10 to 30 bench, so it starts to lift off the seat at 10 PSI. That means 10 times 69, that means it's putting out 690 pounds of force. All right, I size this valve and I know that I need 680 pounds of force, okay? So that means this actuator needs to start to lift this trim at 10 PSI, period. If you set that on the bench, not on the valve, while the stem is connected, you set that on the bench, then put it on the valve, now you basically cheated the packing friction and the plug seal friction. And depending on what packing or what plug seal you have, that thing is it's just not right. It, it's gonna, you're gonna try to get it to lift and it might lift, you know, it's got too much friction on it. It might lift it, you know, 11 or something like that. No, we need it lifting at 10. So what I like to do is put it on the valve. Make sure the spring has decent tension so that the shaft and everything is seated, you know, if you can tighten it up as tight as you can by hand after you've got it mounted on the valve, tighten it up by hand, no stem connectors, just tighten it up by hand. It'll seed everything for you. Make your stem connection, set your travel. Now, go in and set your bench. So when you're setting your bench, so this actuator is a 10 to 30, wouldn't you know it? 690 pounds of force, exactly. Right now, it's moving at about 12 and a half PSI. So it needs to be back down. And we're gonna back it down. This is just for a demo, but I'm just explaining to you the purpose of you know how you can set it up on the valve. And when you're doing it, you know, some guys do it on a table. You're fighting this thing because there's nothing holding it. Or you got a gravity device right here on the ear. It messes up the paint. It's just ugly. Do it on the valve. Anyhow, that's all I got for you. Uh, if you got any questions, give me a shout. Shoot me an email. Uh, you can find my email address, my contact info at www.deltavalvescontrols.com. Or you can reach out to the guys at CVS. They'll give me my number or maybe even my cell phone number. Anyhow, my name is Clint Rawls, signing out. Have a nice day.